almost every organization is going through some form of digital transformation. I think at Deloitte, when we say digital transformation, there are you know different aspects of the journey that we are you know looking at. I think we try to take a cross-sectional kind of view where we look at the different personas that you know are being impacted. So if you look at, let's say, a specific transaction, such as you know someone going to a pharmacy and requesting a refill on their prescription, uh, we would look at that and say that okay, in the future you know, that interaction that you may have of going to the pharmacy can be changed in how you can, you know, use your mobile app to order that. The way we look at digital transformation, it's not just a single, like, aspect of it. We have clients, you know, as the leading data analytics provider across the industries and the engagement model. So what we effectively are positioned to uh, help clients is, you know, figuring out what is the strategy and how you want to think about machine learning and AI from an individual use case, but also from a foundational capacity standpoint. Then, you know, we talk about digital transformation and that how do you actually make this real? How do you deploy it to be able to harness the collaboration, you know, capabilities of data scientists and then be able to, you know, deploy them in a distributed fashion? And then I think the digital transformation, it kind of lives on, right? So there are clients who don't want to take on the you know, the effort that's required to maintain such solutions. So we will actually help clients on a turnkey basis either, you know, run those services. Uh, you know, we do things like pricing as a service for, you know, one of the largest, like, global, like, uh, you know, food and beverage companies. And so we have a few different uh, ways in which we assist our clients. Where I would say, you know, the digital transformation is manifesting itself is across different aspects of it. So, you know, there are some digital transformation happening and how folks are looking at, you know, digital forms that people are getting and how you can do, you know, use machine learning and natural language processing to enrich that data. Uh, if you think of, you know, the conversation uh, in certain organizations, it may be more around, okay, you're taking, still there may be some documents that are being submitted, like, for example, like loan processing or mortgages are a great example, where, you know, we are seeing more and more the entire process is getting digitized. So. How do you, you know, start looking at some of this information in a more meaningful way? I think there are probably a host of reasons, but I think the few that come to my mind uh, based on some of the recent client interactions that I've had is that there is usually a you know, technology or a data services team which are, I would say, not dependencies, but more partners in the entire data science lifecycle. Uh, what traditionally happens is that the data scientists or the analytics uh, subject matter experts will typically build a model which will identify and meet their kind of needs and then go to these individuals and say that, okay, this is what I need to be able to support this once it goes into production. What we typically recommend is to engage those individuals earlier on in the journey and have a team comprised of all of the individuals, so even though there may be different points of activity, you at least have a scrum call or something where everyone is aware of what are the needed elements once this model goes live. I think the other piece that I would also emphasize is just having a clear RACI or you know accountability like matrix of who's responsible for some of these things because if it's, let's say, a business user at, at the end of the day, you know, they want to really focus on what are some of the timelines on which this will be made available. The, and what usually ends up happening is that the model itself may be, you know, hitting some of those timelines, but then, you know, there's some challenges in making sure the appropriate technology um, and data pipelines exist. Specifically, where I see some challenges is that there is usually a different configuration that's needed in the technology environment between a development and a production. Uh, and a lot of this is very granular in terms of you know, memory allocation, how you can you know, scale up certain applications. And this is something where we typically would recommend you know, having those discussions earlier on rather than once the model has been built and you're looking to deploy it. Ultimately, it's the human who has that tribal knowledge 
And you know, whether that person is five years into that role or 20 years plus, like, I think that's a very important quotient. So where I see you know, the, the real value add is when you're able to take some of the models and be able to embed some of that tribal knowledge, not upfront, but through the, you know, the revisions and the iterations over, you know, like if you think about the whole concept of like A-B testing, it's really bringing that into a more, you know, continuous improvement kind of mindset. So I think a lot of clients are looking at, you know, ML ops, DevOps, like capabilities for that very reason is that they want to be able to expose the data science lifecycle, not just to the core data scientists, but also to other individuals who are interacting with it. So people are not having to go into an extensive change management program, but they understand how and where they interact in the overall life cycle, and this yields to a better you know, adoption down the road, I think. Data democratization is a great you know, way to get everyone plugged in and bought into it, but I also feel that data democratization is very different from you know, data awareness. And what I see is in a lot of organizations, it's that data awareness, which is really folks tend to you know, push off doing machine learning because they feel that the data quality needs to be you know, at, a, at a certain percentage before they can start engaging. And from my experience that you, know, you may be waiting a long time and losing out in terms of competitive differentiation value. So one of my you know, like recommendations to clients is really to you know, try and figure out how do you, you know, take advantage of some of the newer capabilities like synthetic data generation or other capabilities to still be able to, you know, almost like parallel thread the development of AI um, while you are getting some of the data, you know, quality and data accessibility resolved. Where I would say that there is, you know, agility required is really being able to find those you know, day-to-day -day operations where you can integrate that and realize value. I feel like two types of innovation, some which are step change and others which are more, you know, either creating new ideas or new products or solutions. Uh, where I see the current, uh, you know, opportunity is really looking at agility and more how do you do those incremental plays in a way. And I think having a machine learning platform enables users to participate in that. The way I look at data science and machine learning platforms is in an enterprise organization, you will want to think of it in the same way that you may think of your ERP system or a CRM system you know, for customer relationship. So in our you know, Deloitte kind of you know, view, what we look at is having you know, organizations where there is a, you know, a program to be able to you know, have business intelligence but then there's also a program to support artificial intelligence. And in some organizations, that role of BI and AI is kind of merging, but for the most part, it is slightly different you know, use cases and expectations that people have. So what I would say is that if you're thinking of what is the type of information that someone is looking at in terms of the, the business performance, you know, that's something that you can rely on business intelligence. Where I would say AI comes into play is you know, being able to provide you a richer appreciation in terms of previous year's performance. You know, are there other external factors that may describe or explain some of the variances? So those are some of the things that I would look to for AI versus BI, but where I see opportunity is to really look at this as an integrated you know, insights and analytics function and making sure that, you know, you have the appropriate support that's needed for those who are advanced analytics professionals and also data scientists. Right now, there are certain, you know, inhibitors to everyone being able to access AI. I think it's a combination of, you know, the user sophistication, the infrastructure, both technology and data availability, and then the budget in terms of the individual's time and also the cost incurred by the organization to incur that environment. You know, I think where I see this kind of, you know, being able to drive the adoption is really 
being able to harness the intelligence on the organizations like you know talent like focus and how they want to grow that so the way I think of it is that there are going to be some folks who are really knowledgeable about the analytics today there are going to be some folks who are going to be you know r crucial to defining the analytics of tomorrow and then you need a third set of folks who are really what I call you know the all-rounders who can essentially help you know connect the the divide between today's analytics and the analytics of tomorrow if you think about it you know you're not going to just walk away from the legacy analytics programs that people have you know gotten accustomed to there really needs to be a graduated way where you can get people to adopt for me the challenge is not so much in can you develop new models the more challenging piece is can you sustain those models in a real-time environment where there's always going to be multiple factors. There's going to be, you know, crappy data. There are going to be people who are going to kind of, you know, have expectations on the model performance. And then there is going to be a changing kind of, you know, set of variables where the models themselves will need to get refined over time. So to me, when you look at these three, you know, kind of areas to focus on, a machine learning platform really makes it a little bit easier to get around it. It is not like a black box which will kind of, you know, just sit there on your environment. It's really supposed to be more of a collaboration tool which kind of will, you know, drive adoption of AI in your organization. I think the biggest challenge with digital transformation is just the amount of, you know, thinking that, that you need to kind of just pace yourself on because there are you know, implications on multiple crowns. There is the actual you know, uh, stakeholders who are impacted by the transformation, but then there is also broader implications on how you are you know, providing individuals or you know, entities recommendations based on the, the data analysis that you're doing. So I think in certain industries, especially regulated industries, there is a value in having a strategy around what you know, someone's trying to achieve with AI just so that there is a common understanding of what are the drivers behind some of the decisioning that takes place. You know, not having a strategy usually creates a lot of noise around what is considered, you know, a successful AI deployment. That being said, I think that what you really want to do is look at an AI solution and look at the entire life cycle of it and make sure that everyone along that process is consulted, informed, and you know, if there are aspects of their feedback which need to get factored into the product decisioning that needs to take place. Um, when it doesn't happen, then you have issues like, for example, you, know, you may be providing a recommendation on targeting a specific um, individual for a product, but let's say if there is a very successful execution of it, now you've created a challenge for the downstream fulfillment of servicing that individual or group of individuals. So I think one of the things that we've seen is that there is no, you know, two data scientists who will have the same opinion or same perspective. So what you really want is to be able to support these different ideas, these different preferences of tools, but allow a common you know, view where if there is something which one person has done, which can be, you know, looped with another like model or another idea that someone has how do you kind of co-create harmoniously and that i think is a huge opportunity where both like technology and business focused individuals are you know really trying to make a difference because if you're working virtually after a certain point you realize that okay you know there's only so much that you can do in a group setting but you do have an aspiration or at least i would think most people do to you know, create something new and feel positive about their role and what they're giving to their company. You know, I think what usually tends to happen is that um, all of us, you know, work with in our kind of comfort zone. And as a result, you know, you don't really quite see the, um, you know, often it's not intentional, it just kind of ends up happening. But what I always recommend is that, you know, as much of a focus as there is on technology and the business integration of it. You also want to make sure that you have design thinkers who can 
you know, think through how this is actually going to be utilized. Very often I find that data scientists are very focused on their problem, but they usually, you know, rely on others to make sure that the socialization and adaptation that's needed for a specific use case uh, is something that takes, uh, you know, that is done as well. I think for me it is, you know, being able to set out an AI strategy. Um, I think the second one would be to, you know, identify what is in that roadmap that is already being done and how do you want to, you know, plan out that, you know, going forward. And then I think the third piece is just being able to have an open dialogue with, you know, business and technology leaders on how they want to, you know, think of AI. That last piece is very critical because the way artificial intelligence is being kind of adopted in the marketplace, there are clients who are, you know, building their own artificial intelligence kind of layer, if you think of it, which is, you know, sits alongside how they may have, uh, you know, a CRM or an ERP strategy or a mobile strategy. There are others who are saying that, okay, you know, we will have a quasi kind of, you know, hybrid approach where some of the stuff we will, you know, kind of centralize and have a technology or a data function own, but then there are going to be other components which individual businesses can own. And then there's a third, uh, you know, flavor where there are businesses who are saying, you know what, like we have a very specific need or application of AI, which we understand best, so we're going to go and build it. So, you know, to me, I think clients need to figure out of those three options, like where, and it's not like one is better than the other, but it at least helps the people, whether it's data scientists or, you know, data engineers or advanced analytics professionals, make, you know, informed decisions.